Welcome back to the Lowdown on Physics. This is screencast number 6 for Unit 4 VCE Physics Interactions of Matter and Light. Today we're looking at photons and the photoelectric effect. So following on from Maxwell's work on the photon concept, Einstein decided to run with that and further develop it, I suppose, in, in the context of the photoelectric effect. Now, he suggested that within each metal, the electrons were bound by a different amount of energy. So for a given metal, all the electrons that were bound had a particular energy level that held them in their place. Now, important to note that at this point in time, uh, shells were unknown. That part of the theory of the atom did not exist. So let's have a look at this graph for a minute. Now, what's represented here on the y-axis is the amount of energy required for an electron to be released, so in a given metal. Now, say the electron that was easiest to release would have this amount of energy to, that it had to absorb before it could actually be released from the metal, right down to the most tightly held electron who would require all of that energy to actually be released from its metal. So we'll talk about this a bit more, but this is called the work function. It's the amount of energy that it would have to absorb in order to get away. And if the electron absorbs more energy than is required to get away, the extra energy is uh, kinetic energy. So it gets released with energy and it's moving. If it doesn't absorb enough energy, if it's less than this work function, then it doesn't absorb enough to be released and so it goes nowhere and it will actually release that energy back again. It won't, won't contain or keep that energy. So as I just mentioned, the work function is defined as the minimum amount of energy required to release an electron. It's given the symbol W. And if we want to calculate it, uh, it's equal to H F naught, where F naught is called the threshold frequency. And it is the minimum amount, it's the frequency that provides the minimum amount of energy before an electron can be released. So if it absorbs this, it has the energy to be free, but it actually has no extra energy, so it's got no kinetic energy to actually go anywhere. So let's look at what's occurring then, or what's taking place in order to release these electrons. So if we get incident light that's less than the threshold frequency, that means it's not going to have enough energy in order to be released. And that's what we're looking at on that graph. It actually has to have um, more energy than the work function. So we need a frequency greater than so frequency must be greater than the threshold frequency in order to have more energy. So higher frequency means it's a higher energy photon. So if we're talking in terms of red and blue light, blue light has a higher frequency. So it's a higher energy. That end of the spectrum is the higher end of the higher energy uh, end of the spectrum. So EK max the maximum amount of kinetic energy that any photo, any electron can absorb will be absorbed or will occur when we have the least, about, least bound electron absorbing one of these photons. Okay, So the least amount of energy lost in being released results in the maximum amount of kinetic energy for that electron. So Einstein in his mathematical uh, modelling actually just considered the least bound electron. It was a lot easier to just work with that one electron. And so what he was uh, then working on was that if the light shone on the metal was greater than F0, we have the greatest amount of kinetic energy on that least bound. So just reiterating that, that concept. Now, of course, the law of conservation of energy must be adhered to. Okay, this, this, this is a... This, this always occurs, we, don't, we cannot break this law. Now, if we come back and analyse that, some of the energy then must be used to help the electron escape. The remainder 
must be converted or transformed to a different form of energy. And in this case, it's transformed to kinetic energy. So we can generate an equation from that. We've got HF, that's the energy of the photon, must equal the work function, plus whatever's left becomes the kinetic energy. Or rearranging, if we want to calculate kinetic energy of the electron released, it's the energy of the photon minus the work function. Okay, uh, Lock that little equation away, because we'll use that a fair bit when it comes to analysis of um, photoelectric effect. So using this uh, bit of theory, a graph that we common use, commonly use is a graph of energy versus frequency. Now there's a few important features that I want to analyze. You'll notice here that we've got a line drawn for potassium and magnesium. Frequency increasing frequency in hertz and we've got uh, the kinetic energy in joules but we've um, got a factor of 10 to the negative 19 here rather than trying to include that in our scale on the edge there. Now, really important, notice that these lines are parallel. The gradient for each of these lines is Planck's constant. Now, a common question that comes up in the exam is to use some data, maybe create a graph, and then create get an estimate for Planck's constant. Now, 99% of the time, that graph will produce a gradient that's maybe 5 or 4, but not exactly Planck's constant. So be careful, don't try and fudge it. They're not expecting it to be exact. They want to test that you understand this concept that the gradient will produce um, Planck's constant. Next we've got well, the intercept is the value Hang on, wrong intercept. The intercept here is the threshold frequency. It's the frequency that must be achieved before we can actually eject electrons um, with any kinetic energy. If it's less than this, if we follow this, we haven't actually given it enough energy before they uh, get a positive kinetic energy, if that makes sense. Um, so they've got to, got to overcome. Well, let's look at the next point and we'll come back to that one. The y-intercept is the negative value of the work function. So we come back to here. This value here is our work function. That's the minimum amount of work, a uh, minimum amount of energy before we can release it for a given metal. So if we come back to here, the threshold frequency, okay, anything less than that, we don't provide enough energy in order for the electrons to be emitted. And finally, for any particular frequency, the energy supplied, HF, will equal the work function plus the kinetic energy. So it will be the intercept value plus the extra bit up to here. So you kind of got work function is from there up, and then the kinetic energy is from the x-axis or the frequency axis up to where it meets the line. So just look at a, an alternate graph, one that we've plotted on Excel. And we have frequency of light versus kinetic energy in electron volts this time, no longer in joules. So we're now moving in electron volts. So notice here, gradient is H. We've got these parallel lines for the different metals. Threshold frequency is this intercept here for each of the different metals. We've got the work function here, the Y intercept for each of the three metals. And just to reiterate, parallel graphs, the only things that are changing are the threshold frequency and the work function, which is your y-intercept. Okay, um, So work function directly proportional to your threshold frequency. Now on that last slide we had it in kinetic energy in electron volts. Now generally the, the reason for that is that we look at the stopping voltage because that's, that's what they were doing. They were stopping the current and therefore working out how much energy it had based on that. So working backwards, um, you can calculate the kinetic energy from the stopping voltage using uh, EK equals the charge times the voltage. And since we're using electrons, it's the charge on an electron times the stopping voltage, which will give us our kinetic energy. So further to that, then we can 
convert a stopping voltage versus frequency graph into a kinetic energy versus frequency graph by multiplying the stopping voltage by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 to put it into joules. Okay, so let's have a look at an example. We've got a green light, we've got wavelength 500 nanometers and a stopping voltage of 0.8 volts. Find the speed of the fastest moving photoelectron produced. So to do that, we've got E equals Q V naught. So we've got the charge times the stopping voltage. That gives us the kinetic energy of 1.28 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. I've left units off there. Find the work function then. So we know the wavelength, E equals HF, but that's the same as C over lambda. So substituting in, we've got H times speed of light over the wavelength, that's to give us our frequency, minus our kinetic energy. So two values there. there, do that subtraction, we've got 2.698 times 10 to the negative 19 joules as our work function. Okay, that's it for this screencast. We'll see you shortly.